I am really excited to share this groundbreaking interview with Nadine Artemis, the author of Holistic Dental Care. We're going to talk all about your oral health and how if you have hidden infections in your mouth, if you have an unhealthy mouth, how that will drive up inflammation in your body. And that could be contributing to chronic pain. It can be contributing to heart disease, cancer, to many different disorders, autoimmune conditions of all types. And we're going to talk about Nadine's top strategies for taking care of your mouth. You're going to learn about some different theories when it comes to oral health that you may have never heard before and some really, really amazing strategies for clearing plaque from your mouth, killing off stealth infections from your home, things that you could do at your house to really uh, keep your oral health in tip top shape. This is super important stuff. Now, I do want to tell you guys that we had a little bit of uh, technical difficulties on the audio. We just had a had a poor connection. And so there are some areas where you're going to notice just a little bit of lapses. But overall, the interview gives you so much quality information. So you'll really get the most out of this, even though um, you know we didn't quite get the best recording. So just have some grace there. And we'll definitely bring Nadine back on. In fact, if you have specific questions for her uh, down the road, we're going to do a Q&A with Nadine. We're going to bring her back. Uh, we're going to do a Q&A. So definitely uh, send us an email at info at drjockers.com. If you have any specific questions, anything you want more detail on when it comes to this topic of oral health, and definitely check out her book, Holistic Dental Care. I talk more about it in the interview. And so here we go. Let's go right into the interview. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, we're going to be talking a lot about dental health and how the health of your mouth, your teeth, your gums, your oral microbiome, how that impacts all the regions of your body. And in fact, it can be a major cause of autoimmune conditions, of immune suppression, of chronic inflammatory conditions like heart disease, like, like insulin resistance and diabetes. And sometimes it's not your diet that's making the biggest impact. It's stealth infections that could be coming from your mouth. And so this is really powerful information. Definitely stay tuned. You guys are going to get so much out of this podcast. Our guest is Nadine Artemis, and she is very well known in the natural health space. She's the author of two books, including Renegade Beauty and Holistic Dental Care. She's an innovative aromacologist and the creator of Living Libations, a luxury line of organic, wildcrafted, non-GMO serums, immune-enhancing formulas, medicinal blends, and essential oils for those seeking the purest of the pure botanical, natural health, and beauty products on the planet. Her healing creations, along with her concept of renegade beauty, encourage effortless regimens and inspire people to rethink conventional notions of beauty and wellness. And you can find her website, livinglibations.com. Of course, we'll have that in the show notes. So Nadine, welcome to the podcast. Hello. Thank you for having me. For sure. Well, I know you're a legend. You've been doing uh, natural health work now for many, many years. Um, and I remember I was probably 15 years ago or so just seeing you on uh, David Wolf's stage, actually. I saw some of his, his content that he was putting out and you were out there talking about natural beauty and oral health and things like that. And, uh, you know, I was reading through your holistic dental care book, which by the way, guys, if you are looking for a book to learn more about how to take care of your mouth, which I think by the end of this interview, you'll realize is so much more important than you thought it was. This is the best book I've ever read on it. And I'm reading books every single day, um, in a natural health space. I never read a book as well done. It's, it's really an easy read, lots of great images, um, and really to the point you guys will get so much out of it. It's called Holistic Dental Care. And so Nadine, what really inspired you to write this book? Well, I found that like in my health journey, which I feel like I've been studying and making natural products since the 90s. And I, I understood a lot that I could do with my body like now, right? Because I mean, when you get to this, I don't know, like if people have been living sort of normally before, and then you're like, oh my God. So if I have a stomach ache or a headache, there's like a whole bunch of other things I can do besides grabbing aspirin and Pepto-Bismol. So that had sort of been my journey in the 90s. And I, I really understood sort of in the beauty level or the health level, like all the things to do with my body. But the teeth, it was like hard to find research. 
and that kind of stuff. But there was a holistic dentist in the city that I lived, but they weren't too holistic, but the, uh, the hygienist was. And so I went, you know, for my checkup again, I'm in my early twenties. I'm a young entrepreneur. I'm not on the parental dental plan anymore. So yeah. going to the dentist is not fun. It's not really where you want to put your budget, you know? Um, and I'm like the smells and the chemicals, and I still didn't have a natural path there, but the hygienist was really awesome. And she saw the start of a cavity on the tooth. And I was very used to the kid thing where, you know, you get the lecture and the, like just that whole thing that we all grew up with. And she said, go home and like mix your things, <laughs> you know, you all your concoctions and then come back in six months and we'll see where it's at. And so that's when I created what is now called happy gum drops, which is this uh, dental serum, which was, was mm -hmm. wasn't existent before, which I would uh, coat on the teeth, do the gums, brush with it, with baking soda, and then also floss. So I'm getting that serum up into the gum line, everything. Well, not only did like the whole gum health and, the, you know, everything improve in my mouth, just amazingly, the cavity, the beginning of the cavity was gone. She showed me on the x-ray. So that was like my first understanding of like, the teeth are alive. They're not just these inanimate objects that like you grow, you get lectured on from the dentist and that they're just static, solid things in your mouth, like little stones, but they are connected to the body and that, you know, you can change them. And that if there is, if you're on the pathway to a cavity, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's over for the tooth or that's got to get filled and that kind of stuff. So that was revolutionary to me. I started to sort of understanding, but there's a lot about dentistry that's like, out of our hands in a way, like decisions about fillings or like all the tools and the stuff that's at the dentist is not stuff that we commonly have at home. Um, but I was like, but how I'm very interested when it comes to beauty and health of like, how can we take care of the body with the least amount of effort? Mm -hmm. I really like that armchair approach. And then on a wisdom level, I feel like the body was really designed spectacularly. And a lot of the issues that happen is when we're getting in the way. So I like to go broad, step back and go, okay, what are the systems? What's working here? And then when we, and, and I knew we weren't born with a toothbrush in our hands. So, and we weren't, you know, obviously when you walk down the drugstore aisle, that whole periodontal promised land didn't exist for thousands of years, right? Yeah. So what have we been doing? And then through that questioning, like, how do, how does the body take care of the teeth? How does the teeth, body sort of brush the teeth? Um, I found uh, rare research at the time on this dentineal lymphatic system. Mm. So our teeth have a lymphatic system. And now we even know that the brain has like a lymphatic system. Yeah. So, and not only was this just a theory, but when I came across it, there was, um, it was a very rare book. I love old books. So uh, one of our, he's dead, he died in 209, but Dr. Hal Huggins since six, 1963 has been trying to tell us about, you know, mercury and dental issues. So we're really thankful for his institute and his body of work. And he wrote a book called um, Why Raise Ugly Kids. He has, he has a funny sense of humor. And one of the chapters is, was on dentistry, um, the teeth, because he is a dentist. And it talked about how he met this dentist called Dr. Ralph Steinem, who just blew his whole dental like theory out of the water because Dr. Stein, and then I went to discover his work. So what he discovered was he was a dentist in the fifties and he would get severe allergies in every August so much that he couldn't do his practice anymore. And then he found out about like eliminating, you know, sort of white bread, white sugar, the white diet, and then his, everything improved like that he could. So he was like, Oh my God. So there's this real systemic connection in the body. And from, and this was in the fifties. So obviously closer to the forties and in the forties, it was the, not the dental association that apparently there was, they were the top people were sort of debate debating, you know, how do cavities come and sort of what are their theories? And then what is the association going to sort of say, this is what we feel. And so they felt at that time that they decided in the forties that it's the acidogenic theory, meaning acids and sugar in that debate, we, then we lost the side of the, some of the dentists that felt there's a systemic thing going on. And that systemic connection, they saw roots and studies, you know, from like the 1800s upwards. So there was a body of knowledge for some dentists at that time. But anyway, the acidogenic theory with Linda University and just speaking like a, a researcher, 
And so this is what he, so he found through studying, and I guess rats make a good teeth analogy, but through um, using x-ray dye, he was able to then chart the journey and then those substrates communicate with the hypothalamus gland. And then there's obviously our whole body really functions with communications from the, thal mm. the hypothalamus gland on one simple level. Sure. And so then that creates all those body and chemical reactions. And then long story short, it takes uh, about five minutes for this to follow and chart the substrates and the blood that's about to nourish the teeth. Then, and it goes, so it's from eating and then the blood going up back into the roots of the teeth. Apparently that only takes about five minutes. Five minutes, wow. But then, and I hope I've got my I, my exact numbers, but it's a very short I remember period. you talked about that in the book. I don't remember. Yeah, okay, good. Time, but it was, it was a very short amount of time. Yeah. Yeah, but then the nutrients and then they find them actually. Yeah. Yeah. And then from that root to its journey in the tooth, that takes yeah. an hour. So that short right. journey takes a long time. And so our teeth are like trees with their roots and they're drawing up nutrients from that blood and it's centrifugal. So it's inwards and upwards. Now, when that blood gets into the pulp chamber, which is the pulp chamber is that juicy inner part that's, that's removed. Let's say if there's a root canal. So there's a lot going on in that pulp chamber and it gets fenestrated through there. And then that blood becomes a clear lymphatic li liquid that then gets pumped up through the odontoblasts, which are these things that help our bones just stay alive and healthy and strong. And they pump up this liquid onto the surface of the teeth, like this microscopic sweat. And then together, that liquid and the saliva will also, you know, go to areas that need repair. There's an intelligence there. However, so that's the system and that's in a healthy body. If we start having diets that, yeah, if they're high in acid, like pop and sugar, but not because they're sitting on the teeth, but because of what that sugar is going to do to our blood system, our blood sugar level, stressful hormonal periods, like teenage times or pregnancy or a chemical lifestyle or a lot of cell phone use that's by the, those glands that are right by the jawline. Those kind of things can stagnate that dentine lymphatic system. So then it's like, it's just stagnant, you know? And that's like sort of that neutral zone, not a zone we wanna be in. Now, if things progress and the body is just getting worse, then that system reverses mm -hmm. and it becomes like a straw. And then the tooth is like sucking in from the mouth. And of course, in the mouth, it's the first gateway. We've got virus, bacteria, you know, fungus. And then that gets pulled into the tooth. And that is the genesis of the cavity. So it's so systemic. So interesting, because we've always been told, you know, it's sugar sitting on your teeth, yeah. cytogenic type of theory. And I, I don't think that's healthy, but obviously, uh, you know, that's not really the root cause. A major contributor is what's happening on the inside. And, uh, you know, what kind of environment we're creating. And that's interesting that, you know, it's, it's like, you know, a river, should, you know, really all, all things in her body should be flowing and yeah. not stagnant, right? Yes. And, um, you know, interesting also the, just the idea of the lymphatic system in our teeth, which makes sense because every, every system of our body is, is creating metabolism. It's creating energy yeah. that's going to eliminate waste. And so everything's creating sense. metabolism and I feel like everything breathes as well. So even the teeth yeah. have a respiration cycle. And then if we layer that dentineal lymphatic fl fluid system onto like other knowledge that we've learned in the past, like Dr. Weston Price, who's like, uh, we need vitamin D3 and K2, or there's a husband and wife doctor team in the twenties who really saw like, if we add vitamin D to the children's diet, mm. they will, the cavities will stop. And then in some cases reverse. And then if you layer that on with like Dr. Melvin Page, you also saw that when the blood levels, the blood serum levels of phosphorus drop, which are dropped with high blood sugar levels, then cavities begin too. So we can also then see the remedies uh, on, a, on a systemic diet level are vitamin D3, K2, magnesium, calcium, like the minerals. But the D3, K2 that, well, that Dr. Weston Price, he, he didn't know. Uh, the K2, he called it the X factor. X he was like, there's something in there, which we now know is that. And now we know too, that D3, K2 as partners, they're like, um, they're like ushers. So we need them in our diet because they usher the minerals into the bones. And that's where we need yeah. them. Because if we don't have those, then things like calcium, magnesium will just float around in the blood serum levels, but we need it building up the bone matter. 
Yeah, that makes so much sense. And so really the most important nutrients for healthy teeth, that nutrients that we get from our diet and from our environment are going to be vitamin D3, K2, what, phosphorus, magnesium, calcium. You got it. Yeah. And what are some of the best foods for people to be eating to, to get those? Um, well, some of the foods to not eat, uh, mm-hmm. we could always look up first two, yeah. are things high in lectins mm. and phytic acid. Phytic acid's like an anti-nutrient. Yeah. So, you know, if the diet is like oats for breakfast, lentils for lunch, and rice for dinner, you're going to have a lot of phytic acid. And that literally is like anti-teeth health. Yeah. Um, so that's a key thing to know. And then, um, yeah, so food sources, you want to have like just everything, you know, healthy fat, healthy protein, and a balanced approach to carbs, you know, I mean, not as much as we generally eat. And of course, real healthy carbs, um, yeah. not like Twinkies and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of what I call a trace mineral rich diet. Yeah. It's going to be like your leafy good. greens, uh, yeah. olives, yeah. Uh, cucumbers, celery, right? These things are really yeah. like silica and, and, you know, different minerals like that. Grass fed meats. Yes. Uh, always. Uh, you, uh, if you're, your protein has to be the yeah. cleanest it can be on the sure, planet. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Grass fed butter, vitamin K. Yes. Too, right? Yeah. And so egg. yeah, anything that's, um, so any dairy that's like normal, is like is grown in the shadows of factory farming and pesticides. They do not have any K two D three because um, you need to. The animal needs to eat grass, so the chicken yeah. eats the grass, makes the egg, and then you've got K two in the in the yolk. and And that's where you're looking at yellowy, orangey cheeses and yolks and butters. Yeah, I like the Vital Farms. Are you familiar with them? Yeah, that's a good Vital one. Farms butter and eggs. They're they're becoming more and more prevalent. I mean, I'm in a suburb of Atlanta, but it's really actually more of a country area. I'm about an hour out of Atlanta. And our grocery store that's five minutes away, just a conventional grocery store, I can get pasture-raised eggs from Vital that's Farms, so good. grass-fed butter. You know, and ghee, so, ghee is good ghee, too. Gas, yeah, grass-fed exactly. ghee. Grass yeah, and hopefully you can find the local stuff too. Yeah. yeah. So those are really good teeth building material. Um, you know, I had definitely had a number of years where I was vegan too. So, and I get, so I get all the diets I've, I've been there, yeah. but really, truly, it was like, you really, it does the it's very challenging for, for teeth on a long-term level. Um, you know, you'll see because they're not getting those fat soluble vitamins. Yeah. So of course it can be supplemented, but it's a good thing to know. Um, and K2, you can get made out of a fermented soy, so that's okay. Um, but when we don't have those fat-soluble vitamins and those key nutrients, you can see people's teeth kind of get that gray gray and glassy. And that's also because the whiteness of our teeth is really reflected from within. So really having that healthy pulp chamber because the, the enamel is actually transparent. And so it's really the health of the tooth that's reflected through. Now, of course, we can get surface stains or older plaque and tartar can get, you know, especially people that are eating all those antioxidant rich foods, yeah. blueberry spirulina or red wine. And then the plaque, older plaque can get a layer of color on it that mm. is easy to remove. So once you kind of remove that and you can see where the health of your teeth are at, um, but that's so white you know, whitening is like, you really want to achieve that through teeth, um, through, you know, some polishes and diet, but not through bleaching kits and that kind of thing mm-hmm. is it will weaken the enamel over time. You haven't addressed the root issue. And then you're going to be in a vicious cycle, you know, when you get to your sixties and seventies. That, that's really good to know because most people out there are not taking very good care of their teeth and then they just put bleach on it. Right. To yeah. Them. And then they look uh, good, but they're really rotting from the inside out. And let's talk about plaque, what plaque actually is and uh, you know, how we can minimize the amount of plaque that's building up. Yeah, so if we really want to know about, so we, the, dent, the dentineal limb system is, is really key to know, but it's also really key, I think, to know about the mouse microbiome. Yeah. And so that's where we're, again, we're coming out of that older time of dentistry and health and agriculture, where it's just sort of this germ warfare theory, yeah. scorched earth policy, like just kill the germs. And so, you know, many of the procedures and medicants of dentistry is just like, yeah, let's get that prescription mouthwash and kill it off. Or even what's available at the drugstore in the realm of mouthwashes, um, which have synthetic alcohols, alcohols and other things, which would be mutating the mouse microbiome. Those kind of mouthwashes statistically 
show to create over 36,000 cancer cases of oral cancer a year mm. on that over the, that regular stuff that's available. And you it know, just destroys the oral microbiome. My, that's my thought, you know, yeah. is that, yeah, because we're, because that's really keeping the balance of the mouth. And so we want to be using things that work with the mouse microbiome, not just like kind of clear cutting it. And so like things like triclosan and surfactants and like sodium lauryl sulfate that's in pretty much every toothpaste, that's what's right. making it foam, it creates bleeding and receding gums. Mm. And that's why so many different botanicals have been used for thousands of years. Things like rose, tea tree, frankincense, cardamom, clove, you know, it's going to be in different cultures at different times of history, but all of those have been really celebrated for use in the mouth. And one of the main reasons is that these plant materials have something called QSI, which is quorum, they're quorum sensing inhibitors. And so they're able to prevent pathogens ganging up and gaining traction, prevent um, building biofilms in the mouth. So the essential oils are able to bust through that. And in some cases where antibiotics can't even get through, so these essential oils, these plant matters, Plant, which I like to think of as botanical biotics, whereas an antibiotic will just go in and de decimate the whole area. Um, the essential oils of the plants like frankincense, clove, they're able to clean up the pathogens, but keep working with the friendly bacteria without eradicating them. So there's a selective intelligence. Then there, the other things that they do is, you know, they're vulnerary. They're able to speed up he healing. They can bring circulation to the gums. They're able to, you know, help the biome. And so that's what's so awesome for those botanical biotic ingredients. And then we also have some classic pantry ingredients that if you have these in your home, you will be better off brushing your teeth for the next hundred years with these items than with picking up a tube of crust. And that's things like sea salt, baking soda. Uh, there's even a fun thing you can do with apple cider vinegar and baking soda. Apple cider vinegar is totally acid. So right. obviously that's a thing, but you coat the mouth in baking soda after you brush your teeth, kind of get it all around, mm -hmm. leave it kind of on there. And then you add a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar and then your whole mouth becomes like a grade seven science experiment. <laughs> it's all foaming yeah. and it lifts plaque out of the gum wow. lines and all these crevices. And it was designed by Dr. Paul Keyes who was this periodontal surgeon and he was tr trying to help people have that gum grafting surgery. So it's really good for cleaning. And it's a great thing that kids can do because it's fun and it, you'll be amazed at the plaque, the level of plaque removal. That goes so basically you just put baking soda, kind of just take a toothbrush Every, and put it on, yeah. your mouth, on your mouth, on your tongue. Yeah. And take yeah. Every way you get in. You say a teaspoon or a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Teaspoon, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, now that is acid, but the yeah. sum total with, because baking soda yeah. is so alkaline that you're still on the alkaline side mm. of yep. that. And that's something you can do like once a month to just really clear the mouth. Wow. Will that have a whitening yeah. effect too? It does. It does. It's and then, the it, yeah, it gets rid of the plaque. And then um, another fun trip, uh, tip is to take just baking soda. And then now hydrogen peroxide, totally handy, great yeah. thing but we don't want to overuse it because it's really astringent. Mm -hmm. And so it can kind of make the gums a bit tight and pull back a bit. So anytime you're going to use hydrogen peroxide, do a finishing rinse with like just baking soda, mm -hmm. um, just to kind of calm that mouth and alkalize it again. So you can take just a little jar, like a little dish, like, you know, little, like a little thing yeah. and put baking soda in there, pour a little of the diluted 3% hydrogen peroxide in there, leave the cap off, let it dry overnight. So that you have like an base now you have a hydrogen peroxide infused baking soda, mm. and then you can just do that a couple times a month with like an electric toothbrush and get that polishing done, and that's pretty great for whitening. And then we have eight steps that you can do every day that will really turn your mouth around, and that you can really like if you have a dental appointment or if you can't get to one because a lot of people can't right now, do these eight steps for like three months, six months, then go to the dentist or pre plan for your dentist and you will have a much, much better, hopefully less expensive, hopefully shorter visit. Yeah, exactly. You go through those eight steps and some of those things people are just, you know, most people know floss and brush, right? That's pretty yes, much yes. 
the extent of what people know. And then most of the people, even though they know that aren't, aren't flossing, <laughs> they brush their yeah. teeth. that's about it. Right. And most yes. of us are just brushing our teeth really for more like breath purposes. Um, yeah, true. And I feel like there's so much focus on the teeth, but there's like the whole thing and plaque can be everywhere. It can be on the sides of your yeah. cheeks, the tongue. Mm. And so we want to start thinking of like swishes and, you know, like not like you can just take a thing of, a uh, um, a mason jar of water, you have that in your bathroom. You got a pinch of sea salt, um, some baking soda. We make these dental serums. You got a drop or two of that. You just have that ready. Have some shot glasses in the bathroom of the family. And if you just start with that and end with that, you know, and then do like, cause then again, you're taking care of your mouth as an entirety, you yeah. know, and then you're doing things like s- tongue scraping and then, you know, oil pulling can be done at home. Yeah. We make these swishing serums, which are basically pre-made oil pulling. And then we've added things like CoQ10, vitamin D, the botanical biotics. So you can, and then I even have in the books recipes for things like dental butter cups or swishing oils and toothpaste and stuff. So I've also yeah. got a whole bunch of stuff you can do at home. But again, make your own or get those ingredients or or there's the serums we make. But like all of that is way better than anything at the drugstore because anything from there, you're going to have to compensate. You're going to have to like catch up or rebalance in some way. Yeah. So your typical you know, crest or whatever toothpaste that you go out and get, it's actually more hazardous for your mouth um, long, over the long term utilizing that. Plus you've got all kinds of different toxins that you're being exposed to as well. So you're saying you're going to do a lot better using baking soda and sea salt as a homemade yeah. toothpaste. And it's a lot cheaper yeah. too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's like really almost free, really. If you yeah. think about buying a bag of baking soda over a year. Yeah. You know? For sure. So you could do something simple like that. Obviously, there's more advanced things. I know you have uh, essential oil blends that you can be brushing your teeth with. I know there's uh, like clay blends, for example, like bentonite clay activated. Yeah, even. Yeah. On you, those? Oh, those are all great, too. And those are other things yeah. you can have those sort of jar, a jar of bentonite yeah. clay and, uh, and all that we make. We put all those into toothpaste as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. And I, we have launching next week. A, a new toothpaste that actually has this thing, uh, a mineral called nanohydroxyapatite, mm, yeah. which has been approved for oral care for 40 years from NASA right. because it builds bone. Right, right. It 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 uh, evens out any kind of fissures in the like it you know any it really evens out the tooth surface. So it's this miracle ingredient that's only right. been in a handful of toothpaste around the world, and they and then unfortunately it's in a sea of like other ingredients that I personally wouldn't use. Yeah. So I'm so excited that we have this toothpaste awesome. and you you'd use it normally, but then you can also have another stage where you can kind of leave it on your teeth. And we're even getting in these little silicone tooth trays. So you can kind of, mm. kind of like the old, like, a, you know, when they put fluoride in a tooth tray at yeah. the dental office. Mm-hmm. So it's like that, but you can do it at home with the paste. And you kind of just have it like sit there for a bit as well. Oh, that is great. What, what are yeah. the benefits of utilizing clay or activated charcoal when you're brushing your teeth? Cause I know those are, are getting popular. Yeah. Well, the great thing is like, just on a one level, it's a great scrub and it's gentle. So you've mm-hmm. just got that basic like grit brushing your yeah. teeth, but it's very gentle. There's a thing called RDA. And it's funny because a lot of people, including some dentists think, Oh, well, baking soda is too abrasive. And it, it isn't, it's actually around a seven and this is the thing that that measures dental ingredient, denti, dentifrice um, abrasivity. Uh-huh. So, and then most toothpaste are around 70 or 80, including like toothpaste for sensitive teeth are at like 60, 70 and baking soda is like under 10. Uh-huh. So just know that. And then, yeah, these other ingredients like uh, clays or the activated charcoal, they're gentle too. And then they're also really good though at detoxifying the mouth which, you know, so you can add the activated charcoal to your oil pulling or the clay. And then you're like upgrading that oil pulling, like amazingly. So for sure. Or you, yeah. Yeah. Or just, you know, just use clay to brush your teeth with a drop of peppermint. And again, you will be worlds better off than anything at the drugstore. So we've got a lot of great things. Mineral rich too. So you're also getting, it is. Yeah. yeah. And in my book, I also break down like alkalinizers and just mm-hmm. different things that you can pull in to create whiteness or alkalinity, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. That's so, so good. yeah. And the goal behind that, my book was really like, okay, so what do we do with our teeth? Like all the other days that we don't go to the dentist. Cause then when we get there, it's not really uh, working out too good for most of us. 
Yeah, for sure. And you really gave a great step-by-step guide and also went through a lot of the, uh, the, the interesting physiology, like you were talking about earlier yeah. in this interview. Um, and what, how we really need to look at our teeth, you know, one of the big takeaways from your book, you say over and over and over again, is our teeth are alive, right? And, and, you know, we so often think of them as just kind of these inanimate structures there that are meant for chewing, but they're actually very alive. And we've got to really feed them with the right nutrients and, and care for them uh, properly. Let's talk about some of the problems in, in uh, modern dental care, like root canals, for example. What, what's going on there and why can that be a long term problem? Yeah, so root canals, in theory, it's like it seemed like a good idea, whoever uh, came up with it, yeah. because you take a, a tooth that's no longer viable, and then you scrape out the pulp chamber and the nerves, and then you, quote unquote, sterilize it, put some cement in there, and then the tooth goes back in, and then you have your tooth. Um, the sterility is impossible to achieve, and so... Each tooth is like a back molar has 300 meters of microscopic tubules, which I always blows my mind. In my head, I'm always like, wait, is that three? Is it 30? And I have to go, no, it's 300. So, because that's a lot. And that's in one tooth, yeah. 300 meters. Wow. So that can't get sterilized. So then what happens with every root canal now that we've seen independent studies? So yes, some root canals would go off, but now we know even a textbook perfect root canal harbors necrotic bacteria in the mouth. It becomes a breeding ground for pathogens and toxins. Mm. And then every time we chew, that gets squirted into the bloodstream. So you can see how over days, months, years, decades, that is just you know, dampening the whole body's immune system. And it's also like, where is it coming from? You know, it can be a bit of a mystery. Um, so there's, you know, there's like Dr. Joseph Isles in Europe. I think he's been treating cancer for 40 years. He will not start the procedure until a root canal is, is removed, if you have one. Now, causation is not correlation. It doesn't mean if you have a root canal that you're going down that pathway. Um, but it does seem that you know, they do uh, show up in unhealthy ways. And um, even now with thermography, which yes, it's being done a lot for breasts and mammography, but you can get really do your whole body and it shows you where heat signatures are. And so often you can just see the heat signature lines that go from the mouth to other issues in the body where there was a root canal. So what do you do if you have one? or you're told to get one or whatever. Um, if you have one, really just, you know, assess your whole health. If you're fine, cool. But also if something happens later on, you know, if there's some kind of autoimmune thing, it could be there. Um, you could also get ozone injected into it, just kind of keep it stable. But at some point you may have to make a decision or if you've been told you have one. So if you've been told you need to get one, you may not, you know, there are over eager dentists. Sure. Um, and then when actually the American Dental Association was asked about this, they're like, well, it's not an exact art and it's not an exact science. There's an art to dentistry. So I just thought that was interesting because I think we all know that, but there's this feeling that it's so objective and there's x-rays and lab coats involved and it must be black and white, but there really are 50 shades of gray in this, in this dental thing. So no, do you need it done? Um, that's where you really do want to have a good dentist because now you've got a part, you know, before too, it was just like, okay, I'm opening my mouth, you know, you're the expert, but things are changing and we want to be partners with our health providers and understand things together and have informed consent. So how do you find a good holistic dentist? What I know I've referred people to IAOMD.org. That is good. So we we do recommend that as well because there could be areas where we don't know people. Right. Other than that, it's just like yeah. I mean, I ha- my favorite dentist is in Texas. Yeah, I'm in Canada, but I will go there to see him because yeah. he's that good. And people fly from all over the world to see is that him. Doctor Nunnally. Yeah, he's yeah. Doctor Nunnally. Yes, and he yeah, yeah, he's he's amazing, and um, the level of care there was so phenomenal. Um, so he. Yeah. So with the root canal, a you yeah you may not need one. You may just need to take care of the tooth. But if it really is a candidate, you, then the tooth the tooth really probably should come out. Yeah. But the one thing, so when a tooth has to come out, whether it's an extraction or wisdom teeth or whatever, what is standard in dentistry is to leave the periodontal ligament in. 
And we just, we shouldn't, because what happens is that gets buried, the gums grow over top and then jaw rot happens. Mm. Jaw cavitation, which is a cavity in the jaw. Jaw cavitations don't show up in an x-ray until they're 80% underway. Wow. Yeah. And the statistics show that if there was a root canal site, a wisdom tooth extraction site, any old extraction site, it's over 90% that there would be a jaw cavitation beneath that. Um, I had my, I had wisdom teeth, three wisdom teeth removed when I was 20. Finally got to see Dr. Nunnally about five years ago. And uh, yeah, the three, there was the beginning of that. So what happens is they'll scrape the jaw bone, scrape out the decay, then a blood clot forms. That blood clot's very key to cleansing the area. Then the area will be injected with uh, your own plasma. It's PRP therapy and ozone. That's a really good dentist. So those, I also have questions to ask for prospective dentists and that would be one of them. Do you have ozone? Do you have plasma therapy? No. Do you take out the periodontal ligament? Mm -hmm. And you will totally get the right dentist. If they're on that yeah. pathway, you've got gold. Um, so that's what needs to happen if it is a root canal coming out or an old root canal that you're removing, or if it is actually a wisdom tooth that has to come out. And so that's also a practice that really needs to be re-examined. So, and then, okay, so if it's a back tooth, a back molar root canal, kind of, you can probably leave it. From what I understand from the dentist, like Dr. Hal Huggins, not only your, you know, your face isn't going to cave in, it's totally fine. Because, you know, then you, then, the, but then if you're doing the front, I mean, I think you would want to take care of it. And then the options would be a bridge, but then, well, you have a temporary, which you could just take in and out or a bridge, but then you're shaving off healthy teeth on either side to kind of bridge that tooth in the middle, or you can do an implant, which is also people may have implants in their mouths. Traditionally for the past many decades are made of titanium, totally toxic metal, foreign object implanted into the jawline by the brain, not wanted. If you have one, you may want to remove it. However, there are clean options with zirconium. Mm -hmm. There are some ceramic, but you have to check the purity levels of the ceramic, but zirconia has been used for like 40 years in Europe. Really good. I mean, it's still a foreign object, but it's, it's compatibility with immune systems is very, very good. Mm. So that would be like a front area option. But again, you're going to want, you know, you don't want to educate your dentist. You want to go yeah. to somebody that's really got it going on. Yeah, for sure. And in your book too, you have like a list of questions to ask your dentist, basically how to interview them properly. Yeah. So, you know, you, you have the right dentist. So I think that's, that's real helpful. And yeah, those cavitations, I've heard so many people talk about once they got the cavitation cleared out, right? So they came in, yeah. obviously they cleared it out, ozone treatment, things like that to disinfect it, got rid of those, you know, periodontal ligaments. Um, they saw huge, huge changes. In huge. That. Yeah. A neat story. Right. So Dr. Nunnally, who we just talked about, was normal dentist, so to speak. Uh, well, he said, I was a holistic dentist, so I would remove mercury for like a decade, yeah, right? Because right? that's what holistic dentist was in the 90s. And he got so sick and he's like a marathon guy, that kind of stuff. And he, he couldn't feel like he could barely lift his leg up a cur the curb. Like he was not in good shape. And he's a very healthy guy. So he, he eventually somebody's like, talk to Dr. Hal Huggins, which is the other dentist I mentioned. And he was no longer practicing in the States, but he said, okay, meet me in Montreal. And the first thing that we're going to take care of is your jaw cavitations. Mm. Yeah. It's so interesting. You would think get the mercury fillings yeah. out, <laughs> right? But actually yeah. getting rid of the infection makes sense because that's yeah. suppressing the immune system and, you know, causing a lot of inflammation in the system. And so you want to yeah. prepare your body properly to yeah. get those mercury amalgams out. For what do you think about? about a, a place like Dr. Nunnally's is that they can go in and do all the work. Yeah, so true. So this is just such great information. We really need to do everything we can to keep that oral microbiome healthy. I've been really, really blessed. I have ne never had a cavity, no root canal. Amazing. Like that. Ne didn't get my wisdom teeth taken out. I just, I just was, I had some discomfort and I just, I don't know, it was my intuition. It was the Holy Spirit. I was just like, I don't want them taken out. And I was, you know, 19, 20 or whatever it was. And uh, so I still have those as well. Because I, if I had gotten them taken out, I'm sure I would have went to a dentist at that period of time in my life that yeah, you probably would not have taken them out properly. Yes. But yeah, so many other people are having 
tremendous health issues that are related to these things. And um, it's something we really need to take seriously, should be a front line when it comes to our health. And, uh, and then obviously having strategies that we're doing on a daily basis to really take good care of our, our teeth. And you have your eight steps. You wanna go through those before we finish up here? Yeah, and it's always like, can I remember them? <laughs> so yeah. first we're, first we're <laughs> rinsing, uh, right. which we talked about doing that, you know, baking soda or salt, having that jar there, different shot glasses for members of the family. Cause then when you really get into it too, it's like, sometimes I feel like I know too much about the mouth. Cause that's what also makes me fly to the dentist in Texas. Cause like, I know too yeah. much. Um, then you're scraping the tongue. Cause that's a whole other area of like things. And really it will, you'll see, like you'll have less and less environment of your, of your mouth's microbiome. And then, um, then the first normally brush up and down, up and down really fast and you'll get faster at it, but you just want to re reprogram your wrist and arm. And it's just dance. So if it's the top teeth, it's gum line towards the teeth and the bottom teeth, it's gum line up towards it. And that's just one stroke, one way all the time, the surfaces of the teeth, you can go back and forth. Um, and so you're going gum line down. That's a real time when you're like, it's almost like dry brushing your gums, you know, getting the circulation going, getting the botanical biotics in there or that great toothpaste with the baking soda, removing the plaque, alkalinizing that area. And then the next step is doing an electric toothbrush. Um, we have new ones out just as a few months ago that are amazing and angled and really remove the plaque and they're EMF free and working on it for a few years to find like the ultimate uh, electric brush. Other than that, I recommend like maybe like oral B or something because it's got the round heads. So you've got a different shape than the rectangle. And that's really good for getting behind the front teeth and those areas. And then you think of that area is like you're polishing, you know, when they would polish like wood the gym floor at school, it's like you're really buffing the teeth now, getting them shiny. Then you're going to Ideally, you're going to take a drop of one of those dental serums along the floss, and you're going to get those botanical biotics and those nutrients right up in between the teeth that are helping those tiny microbiome spots. And if you're if you, if you bleed when you floss, you know obviously that means the gums are a bit spongy and weak. And so those dental serums will really help. Um, people find that if they do that oil on the flossing they can not, they can stop the gum bleeding really with even a day or so. I mean, some people may take longer depending on the whole body, but it really tightens and tones the gums. So we do that. And we say do that twice because the second time round, you'll just get more out. And that's probably going to be less and less, but in the first few months. And then, then I believe we're rinsing again. Or, and at that time you could, you could incorporate oil pulling and then you're going to, then the next steps, any special areas. So if you've got one tooth, that has got a really receding gum line, then you might use some dental serum on that area. Mm -hmm. We also have these blunt tipped syringes. So it's kind of like a teeny tiny water pick that you have total control yeah. over. And then you can put serums in there or like a little bit of hydrogen peroxide with a sea salt water. And you can flush out the sulca, those that, the gum lines of each teeth, and then really getting your gum pockets back down. So if you've ever been to the dentist, they're like, oh, your gum pockets, like a five, six, seven, eight, nine. You've got to bring those back up to like a one, two, three. Because the more those gum lines recede, then what gets exposed is enamel that is, it's not the same kind of enamel as the rest of our teeth and then very vulnerable enamel to gum line cavities. Wow, yeah. So obviously super important stuff and very thorough, very thorough process to go along with that. And guys, starting, starting to incorporate this is gonna really make a big difference in your overall health. You're gonna start to see that you just feel better because when you start to change the makeup of your oral microbiome, that reduces your, what we call your allostatic load or your pathogenic load and you just start to feel better, more energy, better mental clarity, better immune resilience, so less likely to get fevers, colds, flus, things like that. So there's a lot of benefits taking really good care of your mouth like this and having a you know just a good regimen uh, that you can be following to really take good care of it. And so guys, you can get all this information. Um, Holistic Dental Care is her book and livinglibations.com. We'll have it in the show notes, but definitely check out Nadine, check out her products, her oral health products. She also has a whole beauty line as well. Um, and her great book as well, uh, Renegade Beauty too, 
which talks all about that. So Nadine, thanks so much for your time. Any last words of inspiration for our audience here? Um, well, just know, I mean, I may have brought a lot of information and it may make you kind of close your mouth and go, oh boy, <laughs> but just know <laughs> truly, truly like your mouth really is alive and it really can turn around and it might just be like the, the, the one thing that goes, ah, oh, and then everything else falls into place. Yeah, so true. Well, thanks again for your time, guys. Check out our website and we'll see you on a future podcast. Be blessed, everybody.